my soul. The pricing. The regulation. Where are my property rights, right? These are the issues people living in Glendale that want to invest in real estate have to deal with. And guess what? It's cool that you're at your house, probably in your underwear, clicking on your iPhone watching this video because I am here to help you even though you don't have any pants on, right? Let's jump into it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and I'm here to help the fine people of Glendale, right? Specifically, my girl. W-D, W-D-40, right? New nickname. I'm just going to call you 40, right? I'm just going to call you 40 for the rest of the shop. Just kidding, W-D. Just kidding, girl. Now, here's the situation. You are in Glendale, California. Now, the weather, weather's great. Weather is quite nice out there in Cali, but you know what sucks? A lot of stuff that's going on with the housing market, if you are like you, trying to get into affordable housing investments, right? If you don't have a lot of money, you're just a small little mom-and-pop landlord living out there in Glendale, the deck, the deck is stacked against you. It's almost impossible for you to get things moving in the Glendale housing market, right? Like, first of all, you got the pricing, right? The pricing is insane, Right today, I'm going to be showing you a triplex that you can pick up for about 32 G's out of your pocket. Right? Imagine that—a triplex. That's that's a place where there's three apartments, folks. Imagine that in Glendale for that price. Not possible, right? In addition to that, you know, <clears throat> sometimes we get a little political here on the show, and then I get all these people like. Yeah, why are you talking about politics? Just stick to real estate, bro. Listen, folks, if you think politics and real estate do not intersect, you are out of your freaking mind, man. What the politicians of California are doing is is uh, they're, they're just stripping people of property rights, right? Whatever your political thoughts and affiliations are, that's cool, right? Like if you voted for uh, Joe Biden... And you want to invest in real estate, I would love to help you. If you voted for Donald Trump and you want to invest in real estate, I would love to help you, right? I'll probably make fun of you if you voted for Joe Biden. I'll joke with you on the show, but we can still work together, right? But here's the thing that we can't we, we can all agree on. We can't argue on this fact. If you're in an area uh that's like incredibly blue, like California has gotten, uh your your rights as a landlord <clears throat> They're, they're, they're being uh, deteriorated. They're being eaten away. And that's going to affect your business, right? So they are very much aligned, right? Uh, you're just, point blank, you're just going to make more cash flow and have more freedom and ability to run your business appropriately uh, in a red market. Uh, that's, just, that's just how it is, right? So people like WD come to me uh, to invest in those kind of markets because the pricing is cheaper and your rights as a landlord are much higher, right? So without further ado, WD, let's have me get off my soapbox here and actually get into the the real stuff now, the numbers, the analytics, the metrics, the strategy on this triplex that you could pick up for about 30 Gs. And before we get into that, though, folks, if you like what I'm doing and you are out there in Glendale and you're feeling the, the pressure, you're feeling the burn, you're feeling the pinch from the government and from the incredibly high housing prices out there, and you'd like to pick up cash flow rental properties like this and then have my team operate them for you, uh, just like we're going to do for WD, shoot my team an email, give us your number, or click the show notes below to book a call because this video was sent to her months ago. This property is no longer available, right? you got to work with me one-on-one -on -one to get the videos with the actual properties in real time and do the deals, right? So quick break, and then we'll get into the full analysis on this triplex, WD. Please. I think it's too big. 
No, I think I was drinking a lot. Welcome back, folks. This, this is what you're paying for. Let me stretch. Let me get a little, oh, a little, little stretch in there, you know, because this, this is where we roll up our sleeves and we see how the sausage is made, right? Any jerk off on the internet can uh, say, hey, buy properties out here in the Cleveland market because they're cheaper, right? Anybody could do that, but... Just because it's cheap doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money, right? It is my goal to try to mitigate your risks of money loss as much as possible. So I want to give you all the information I possibly can so you can make an appropriate, informed investment decision, right? I understand uh, the Cleveland market is new to you. That's why I'm here, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of real estate run the largest scattered site rental portfolio of its kind, right? We're the one-stop shop for investors, okay? One-stop shop. Starts here, due diligence process, identifying properties that I think will make sense, right? Then after the sale, my team, we handle the property management. We do insurance, right? We do insurance everywhere in Ohio, right? So if you are watching this show right now and you have a rental property anywhere in Ohio, I can almost guarantee you I could save you money on your premium, right? Uh, reach out to us. We'll give you a uh, no obligation quote because all we do is landlord policies, right? So, like, don't ask us for a quote on your boat or your car. We ain't in that game, right? Just rental properties. Now, insurance, check. Property management, check. Maintenance, check. Renovations, check. Landscaping, check. But back to where it all begins, right? Due diligence. Understanding what you're getting, okay? Unbiased assessments. This is not my house. I don't own this house. The seller hasn't hired me to sell this house to you. You have hired me to break it down, see if it will fit your investment goals. So that's what we're going to do. 518 Lake Ave, Elyria, 44035. Been on the market for 20 Three days. The price, $122,500. I like this property quite a bit, but I don't like the price. We only have two photos. That is unfortunate, but it is par for the course when you're investing in real estate, folks. Tenant-occupied uh, properties, notoriously difficult to get inside to get photos. But I will say I do believe the listing agent and the seller were a little lazy on this one because it's occupied by two tenants, but it is actually a triplex. There is a third teeny tiny unit above the garage. It's like 300 square feet, something like that, a little one-one. Uh, it's vacant, so I don't know why they didn't give us pictures. So I don't know what's going on with that. We'll have to figure that out. Um, as we go further down the due diligence process, I'm assuming it's going to need a little bit of repair. Uh, probably nothing major. I'm sure you're doing just like a quick turn, right? But it's kind of irrelevant because it's almost priced in like free. You're really not paying for that unit, right? Now, 122.5 is what they're asking. I don't think we need to pay 122.5. I think the appropriate price here is going to be 115k. Now, if we're getting like just a standard duplex out here. Like, dude, we're probably looking at like 100K for this because uh, each, e each of the units in the duplex has three beds, one bath, right? And those are going to generate huge rents, 850 a month, okay? And then it's almost like we're getting that third unit for free, right? Like 15K is basically all I'm really adding on to that is what I think we need to pay for it, right? And that one, after we fresh it up, we'll get about 550, right? So market rents on this sucker, 2,250 or 27K for the year, right? But this is what... Uh, different rates, Holton Wise, Holton Wise TV, James Wise, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever you want to call me in this service, what we do here. This is where it differentiates us from like other turnkey providers, right? I'm not going to just tell you, oh, you're going to make 27K a year. That's bang, let's do the deal. No, there's costs associated, right? So if you break that down, right, this is the chart, show you your fixed and variable expense performance estimates, folks, of the 27K you're really only going to be making a profit of about 13820 right? And then if we get it at my desired price point, $115K, you put down 32 bank kicks in 86 right? That projects out to a 29.4% cash on cash return. Sounds sweet. We're not done, though, right? Let's get back to some other real-world things we need to discuss, right? That 29.4% return would be if we can get the existing two tenants up to market rent, if we could get a third tenant in that garage unit, garage apartment unit without any renovation. I don't 
think that uh, either of those are impossible, but I don't think either of those scenarios are likely. Here's what we have, but this is actually pretty friggin' sweet. Uh, the two tenants in the duplex are actually super long-term tenants. One tenant has been there for 22 years, and the other for 10. Their rents are 595 and five and a quarter. Did I tell you this? I'd rather have a tenant in the property for 22 years at 595 uh, than get market rent and change my tenants every couple of years. You will make more money with the 22-year tenant because where you really lose your booty in this business is turning units over all the time. So what we don't want to do is immediately go to 850 because we don't want to lose those super consistent tenants. Folks, 22-year tenants are not common. Do not anticipate buying a property like this in the Cleveland market in what I would call a blue-collar area, like a C-grade area, CB area. Do not anticipate buying something similar to this and getting a 22 and a 10-year tenant. That is an amazing run. You want to do whatever you can to keep those tenants. So what I like to do in situations like this is keep their rent the same for the first year and then slowly bump it up, right? The goal should be to eventually get them at or around market rent without a turnover. Because, dude, they've been there 22 years, bro. Like, 22 years? Like, if you think you're just going to sweep up when they leave and the next tenant's going to come in and pay $850, you are out of your mind. Right? You got to do a full turn, right? Walls, carpet, uh, new fixtures, the kitchen, the bath, the whole shebang, right? You're looking at at least 10 k right? So, you want to try to keep them in there, right? So, it's going to take us a while to get up to those market rents. And then, of course, at the inspection, we'll have to figure out what's uh, the situation with that little garage unit. But again, it's almost a freebie, really. I'm only putting a $15,000 value on it because if we were getting a duplex here, 3131, we'd probably have to pay 100 for it anyway, right? So uh, if the garage unit was all jacked up, I mean, you could honestly just not do anything with it and just rock this as a duplex, right? It makes cash uh, with just the two tenants, right? So all in all, Super solid deal, right? I like where it's at. Uh, the next step, of course, is to put in an offer and then uh, go through the home inspection process, right? Some things you should know. We are not going to be anticipating brand new roof, furnace, or hot water tanks, right? I know people do the turnkey investing and they think they're going to get properties with those new stuff. Now, that's not how it works in the real world, right? Like maybe a turnkey provider that just buys foreclosures, renovates everything, and sells it to you, but they're selling it to you at a premium. If you're trying to buy stuff at or below market value, fair market value stuff, arm's length transaction properties, we're trying to beat this seller up, get a, a nice little discount. What is that, 7500 off of what they're asking for? In the real world, landlords don't do that kind of stuff, right? Think about it. A roof, it's like a $7,000 roof. They last about 30 years. Let's say this roof's 22 years old. Why in the hell would the landlord... Uh, pay seven grand to replace the roof when he's probably going to get eight years out of it, right? Uh, furnaces cost three G's, last about 30 years. Hot water tanks cost about a G, last about 15 years, right? So you're going to get properties like this uh, with these mechanicals uh, in varying age cycles, usually towards the end of their life cycle is what's common, right? That's why on your chart, let's pull that chart back up. As you can see, the capital expenditures I have you saving 1350 a year, right? You're not actually spending that, but I told you your net operating income estimates only 13,820. Let's say you don't have to do furnaces, roof or hot water tanks for the next 5 years, right? You would have 1350 for 5 years, right? In your pocket, right? It's not like you're actually spending that, but I don't let you guys believe that that is pure cash flow because I know eventually the $7,000 bills coming, the $3,000 bills coming, the $1,000 bills coming, okay? Another thing why we're into the chart Repairs and maintenance, thirteen fifty, right? You know where you spend almost all of your repairs and maintenance money? Turnovers, right? This property happens to have a twenty-two year tenant and a ten year tenant, right? So fucking think about that, right? If you had thirteen fifty a year times twenty two years, that's an extra thirty grand, twenty nine thousand seven hundred dollars of repairs and maintenance you're likely not spending, right? That we're budgeting for, right? Think about that. That's why your 22-year tenants, even though they're paying a little under market rent, that's why you should focus on them versus like hitting your specific uh, metrics, right? Real estate, yes, it's a number of business, but it's also a people business, and you got to play the hand you're dealt, right, and uh, make moves based on that, right? But all told, I think this is a super awesome investment, and I'm super high on Elyria right now. Uh, it's west of Cleveland, and I think we get a lot better deals in Elyria because the national folks are, like, just hammering, Cleveland, 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 right? You see all these articles like, what's the best turnkey rental market? And they say Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. But people out of state, they don't ever realize that there's, like, all these other uh, cities and suburbs around Cleveland. Greater Cleveland area has, like, two or three million people in it. 
Only like 350 or 60,000 of them live in the city of Cleveland, right? So there's a lot of fucking housing outside of the Cleveland city walls that a lot of people aren't paying attention to. And I also believe the government in Elyria is easier to deal with, more landlord-friendly than the government in Cleveland, right? Like, in whole, at whole wise, we deal with, like, I don't know, 30 different municipalities, right? Elyria is one of the most landlord-friendly of them in the entire Cleveland market. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.